and welcome back everyone uh, thanks for watching all the other videos which I hope you did and if not then this will be the summary of what we got basically so uh, first we'll be going through color by color what we got starting with uh, foils and then rares and then end with mythic rares of each color yeah and we'll start with the multicolored ones indeed and, and uh, uh, we'll end off uh, with the lithographies which are right here but upside down so you can't see them yet Ooh. So, let's begin with the uh, red-green. Let's see oh, if it's oh, oh. in uh, oh, yeah, frame. Yeah, yeah. You go that way. A uh, little bit backwards. Backwards. Ta-da! Ta-da! Oh, sense Ta-da! Okay. So, here we go. Uh, this is the first common foil, Surta Swine. Yeah. It's actually pretty decent considering what it does, but not that great. I mean, it's a common, but... Yeah, it's a 5-4 for 5. And it's got a blood rush with 5-4 to attacking creature with 3, so... Yeah, it's like a semi-expensive instant built into a sem pretty exp uh, semi-expensive creature. So, yeah, yeah, so it's a common. For it. Can't I argue with that. This one I do love. It's basically a free card because it's a cost 2 mana, you get 2 mana while playing it. It's a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. And it's full, so... And you can nice. choose either green or red, which is awesome. So even if you don't have red mana, you will still get red mana. So it could technically save your save your hide if you don't have any red mana. That too. Now we got a Groot charm. I really like all the charms. Let's see, not yeah. this one though. This, uh, this was pretty decent though, the Groot one. Creature without flying can't block this turn, or gain control of all permanents you own, or Groot charm deals 3 damage to each creature with flying. So, a bit more situational than some of the others, but could be good. Yeah, if you're in that situation though, it could be really good. Then we happen to go get three Gruul Rage Beasts. Ta da! Which makes creatures, when you play them, they will fight another creature in opponent's control. So, hopefully, you have strong creatures in your deck and play this one. That's mainly why you, why you would keep it. However, it's a very late game, so I'm not sure if you'd see that much action, action with it, anyways. But uh, it could be pretty nice, actually. If you kind of foul it out early somehow, Ooh, could be. then uh, it could be really annoying. Yeah. Then Rumble Hulk, which we happen to get two of. Mm. Its power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. Mm -hmm. And it's got a Blood Rush effect. Which is basically why it's a really nice... Uh, not really, but it's a nice card since... You could have three of those and have nine lands, and uh, yeah, things would get so. End down. game. This card would be awesome, mainly because of the blood rush. Mm. Then rubble belt raiders, a really awesome solid mm -hmm. card. We got four of those, and it gets a plus one counter for each cre attacking creature you control. I mean, yeah. how can you not love that ability? Including itself. Including itself, and it starts as so a it, So it is a 4 4 basically if you attack with it uh, the following round. Yeah. Unless it's got haste then. Same round. And then, oh god. <laughs> we have like 8 of those there. 7 of them and 1 foil. Yay! So, signal the clans. You can get a good card if you take 3 different card, creature cards and you randomly choose one of them and put it in your hand. Yeah. So. But, uh, yeah. Not much more to say. Could be good. Rest go back and then you shuffle, or the rest go to the graveyard? Uh, put the rest of... let's see. Shuffle the rest into your library, yeah. Yeah, so, so then, yeah. Then we have the Borborygmos, Enraged. Uh, which was... eh. Well, the effect wasn't too bad, but it's really expensive, so you probably won't be able to play it. Yeah, exactly. But if you do cheat it out, I guess it could be nice. Yeah. I mean, you get lands into your hand, so you could potentially keep on playing lands, or you can discard them with his own effect. Yeah, you just drop four lands, you do 12 damage, which would be mm -hmm. pretty stout. Now we go to the... Oh yeah, we were already started on the Mythic section. So, oh. Domri Raid, the Planeswalker. Yeah. Not that great abilities here, but it's only a three mana Planeswalker, and then when you actually get to the seven one, your creature will have double strike, travel, hexproof, and haste. All of them. It's an emblem for all yeah. your creatures. So that's pretty damn awesome. Yeah. So, um, 
it would be interesting to try and make prol proliferate in this and just play that in three spells and then two two turns later I don't know no well, the one turn later I guess if you have proliferate so yeah it could be pretty sweet <coughs> then we head over to the red and white cards we have a flying haste two two for three mana yeah, pretty, pretty decent, decent I guess and then uh, true fire paladin which is meh. Two two for two. It can increase his own strength or get first strike. No, first strike as well. Oh, that's nice. So not that bad actually. Not that that bad. I mean, could get both. Sunhome Guild Mage. Not sure what that does. Creatures you control get plus one plus zero until end of turn for three mana, mm -hmm. and uh, for four mana put a one one red white soldier creature token with haste on. Why would you pay four mana for a one one with haste? I guess there's some situations, but it's a bit too costly for my taste. Yeah, definitely. Luckily it's not a tap, but still costly. Mm. Then we have the Founder Champion. We got three of those. What does it do? Um, when he enters the battlefield, it does damage the target creature player equal to the number of creatures you control. And oh. it can increase, it to increase its own toughness or power, depending on what you want to do. Oh, yeah. But it's a 4-4 four, 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 6, so yeah, it could be good. Burn deck. Fire main Avenger, we got four of those, one foil. Perfect. Flying with uh, Battalion. 3-3. Three, three. Which, uh, it's a 3-3 three, three flying for four mana. And the Battalion effect deals three damage to toy creature player and you gain three life. So, yeah. not too no, bad. It's not legendary, you could have multiple up. Yeah. Then Spark Trooper, we got two of those. Four mana for a 6-1 with Trample, Lifeling, and Haste. And then yeah. you have to sacrifice it at the end step. What's key to this is that on top of Trample and Haste, it's got Lifeling. That's mm -hmm. why it's actually worth the extra mana. Uh, but it's not super good, but it's good. Yeah, I like it. We should see some play. And we have Boros Reckoner. Three mana. And 3-3... Three, three. Whenever this card is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target creature or player, and it can gain first strike. So, lots of good abilities. It's a 3-3 three, three for 3. Nothing more you can ask, really. Solid card. And then Assemble of the Legion. Yeah. A really sweet card, actually. The quicker you get it out, the more tokens you'll get. Yeah. So, you keep on getting one counter, and that's how many tokens you will get. So first turn you get one counter, you get one guy. Second turn you get two, uh, another type counter, which means you have two, and then you get two guys. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, on, so have several of these, and you'll be unstoppable at turn ten or something. Oh god, I don't even want count. So to the mythics, Aurelia, the war leader. Oh nice, we got one of that, and you'll have er, untap all the creatures you have and have an extra attack phase. That is awesome. And it's got Flying, Vigilance and Haste for 3-4, and it's got only cost 6 mana, so really sweet. Mm. Aurelius Fury, got 2 of those. This X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or players. Tap each creature dealt damage this way. Clear still damage this way can't cast non-creature spells this turn, so... Yeah, well, what I'd like love to see is someone use this and then attack with uh, Aurelia, the war leader, because... <laughs> They have all their creatures tapped, and you get two attack phases. Whoop! Oof, yeah, that's gotta be sweet. So that's why it's Aurelius Fury. And then let's head over to the green blue cards. And this is a decent card. It's a three, three one, one with trample, trample and flying for yeah. three. Um, a bit low on the toughness side, I'd say, but yeah, it's but got flying, so uh, pretty good, I guess. Then we have a Biovisionary, the one where if you have four of them, you win the game. Only got three though, so... Too bad. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we do know how to copy stuff, so... Mm -hmm. Right of replication on one of them is enough. I think you pay seven total. Uh, something like that, yeah. And then you get five tokens, actually, so... Bam! <laughs> Mystic Genesis, yep. counter spell, and you get an ooze on its covered at mana cost. Yeah. So, yeah. I like this one. Costly. Unexpected results. Shuffle your library, then reveal the top card. If it's a non-land card, you may cost it without paying its mana cost. 
If it's a land card, you may put it into the battlefield and return unexpected results to its owner hand. Yeah. So you should probably not play with more than two in any deck, but having one or two in a deck should be pretty nice, I think. Especially if you have a high cost mana card. Obviously. Exactly. It's, I mean, it's, you don't want to play yeah. it if you have like three mana cost max. Yeah, you don't want to play this in like a in elf aggro or something. You want to play this in like an elf ramp with heavy hitters or like an Eldrazi or something like that. And then we have biomass mutation. Could see some play in uh, token decks where since all your creatures become XX until the end of turn. Yeah. But. Probably there are there are probably better cards that, anyways mm. if you want to kill someone fast, but could see some play I guess. Yeah. Then Fathom Mage, it's got evolve and whenever a plus one plus one counter is placed on it, you may draw a card. Yeah. So that's pretty powerful since it's only one one. You'll get to draw plenty of cards. Remember that card that gives all the cards that enter the battlefield two extra counters. Well, that is true. That's true. Da da. And uh, Prime Speaker Sagana, we have entered the Mythics. Yeah. She enters the battlefield with X plus one counters, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. And uh, when it enters the battlefield, draw cards equal to its power. So, kind of like the previous card, but it's only when it enters the battlefield. Yeah. Got two of those. It's kind of like a replenish spell for you. <laughs> <laughs> Master Biomancer. Each other creature you control enters a battlefield with a number of additional plus one plus one counters on it equal to Biomaster's power and as a mutant in addition to its other types. So that's the one he was talking with, about with the Fathom Mage. So it will actually enter with two plus one counters, hence you will get to draw two cards. Yep. So, pretty sweet. So, heading over to the bla blue and black cards. Uh, let's see. An interesting blue and black card to say the least. You draw a card, then you exile a card from your hand face down, as a type ability. You may look at cards exiled with this card, and uh, for two mana and tapping this card, you can return an exiled card with this card uh, to its owner's hand. So, if someone's discarding your card that you really want, you could potentially use this and you'll draw another card and he'll have you discard that. Then you can take it back in the future, but... Yeah, so cards exiled are put in the out of game zone and not in the completely out of the fucking game zone completely. Yes. <laughs> and that's unhinged for you, in case you don't get that uh, reference. So, uh, let's see. Uh, Mortis Strider. When it dies, you can return it to your own, to its owner's hand. Um, one, one for three. I... It's a bit expensive, but it could be annoying if you if you just want to stall people with some sort of block creature mm -hmm. that you could slap some sort of whale glide bone so your creatures are flying. And Still a bit too expensive for my taste. And I gotta take a quick break. <laughs> well, we'll just keep going. Deathbolt Rogue, it can't be blocked except by rogues. And considering how often you actually face rogues, it's practically un unblockable for two, three men actually. Two, two, so it's pretty nice, but it. Uh, I don't know, it, it could use having one less mana, but an unblockable, it's pretty good. And then we come to my favorite, Consuming Aberration, I got three of those, one being Foil. Its power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your opponent's graveyards. So, if you're facing several opponents, all of their graveyards combined is its power and toughness, and then Whenever you cast a spell, each opponent reveals cards from the top of his or her library until he or she reveals a land card, then puts those cards into his or her graveyard. That's for every opponent. So it'll definitely get a lot stronger every time you cast a spell. So that's one sick bastard for five mana. And then we have Night Veil Spectre, got three of those. It's got flying, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player exiles the top card of his or her library. You may play cards exiled with Nightville Spectre. Play lands from that player, and then you can start playing his uh, cards as well in the future. Could be pretty sweet. For 3 mana, 2-3 flying. Then we have Soul Ransom, got 3 of those as well. 
can enchant a creature, you control and enchant the creature. And then an opponent may activate this ability which is discard two cards, Soul Ransom's controller sacrifices it, then draws two cards. So either you keep the creature or an opponent discards two of his cards and you get to draw two cards. So could be pretty nice. Then you have Mind Grind, three of those as well. Each opponent reveals cards from the top of his or her library until he or she reveals X land cards. Then puts all the cards revealed this way into his or her graveyard. X can't be zero. Seems like blue and black are going for some sort of a mill thing. So plenty of mill cards it seems. Really nice. Uh, Whispering Madness. Got three of those as well actually. Uh, two mana and blue and black. Each player discards his or her hand, then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. You can cipher it onto a creature, meaning when it deals combat damage, you get to cast this spell again for free. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty damn good for milling, as we said before. So they are definitely going for a mill theme. Then we go to the mythics. Lasav, Demir, Mastermind. Got hexproof, and whenever a creature is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, you may have Lasav Demir Mastermind become a copy of that card. Except its name is still Lasav Demir Mastermind, and it's legendary in addition to its other types, and it gains hexproof and this ability. So you get to change your power and toughness, and you get to change the activated ability into whatever creature card an opponent lands into a graveyard, so... Uh, and then you'll also get to keep on doing that in case a better creature pops up. So, pretty sweet card for 4 mana. 2 blue, 2 black. And it's got hexproof, so that's also nice. Lots of good blue-black cards, actually. Dusk Mantle Seer, flying. At the beginning of the or your keep, each player reveals the top card of his or her library. Loses life equal to that card's converted mana cost then puts it into his or her hand. Hmm. Not really a part of the milling theme they're going for. It seems to be some sort of burning theme, but I'm not sure. It costs a lot of mana of itself, so you probably... Not quite sure what you want to do with this, but there are probably other people out there who knows what to do with it. And then we get to my favorite guild, the Orsov guild. White and black. Uh, this one's an uncommon extort, and it's a foil, so that's pretty nice. Uh, 5 mana, 1-3 with extort, and when it ends the battlefield, you can play any mana until life. Target opponent reveals that many cards from his or her hand. You choose one of them and exile it. So, yeah, pretty sweet, I guess. Then uh, this Copa Guild Mage. 2 mana for 2-2, two, two. then you can pay 3 mana to gain, give a target creature lifelink. And then there's the better one, where whenever you gain life this turn, each opponent loses that much life. They could work together, of course, but considering it's got black and white, it's probably got plenty of extort, so whenever you gain life, your opponent will lose life. So that's pretty sweet. High Priest of Penance, I got four of those. Whenever it is dealt damage, you may destroy target non-land permanent for two mana. And it's a 1-1, so perfect blocker, if anything. Immortal Servitude, I got five of those. Return each creature card with converted, con converted mana cost X from your graveyard to the battlefield. It costs three white or black mana, and then X. So you'd want to have, for example, a theme of having creatures with two ma mana cost, converted mana cost. And then you can get all of them back from the graveyard to the battlefield. That can be pretty damn devastating. Then we have Merciless Eviction. I got three of those. Um, you get to choose one of these for six mana, uh, whereas one is white and one is black. Exile all artifacts, or exile all creatures, or exile all enchantments, or exile all planeswalkers. That's pretty heavy. I'd say. And then we have the Alms Beast. 4-4, four, four, uh, 6-6. Six, six. 
for 4 mana. But uh, creatures blocking or blocked by Oms Beast have to have lifelink. So it's got a heavy penalty, but if you make it unblockable somehow, you kind of overcome that. Then we have Treasury Thrall. It's a 4 4 with 6 mana, and it's got Extort, so that's pretty nice. And then there's Whenever this card attacks, you may return target artifact, creature, or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. So you get to get them back somehow. And I got two of those actually. Where's one is foil? So it's pretty nice. Then we go to the mythics. Death Pact Angel. It costs six mana. Two black, two white, so six mana total. It's a 5 5 with flying. But when it dies, you get a token which can be sacrificed for the same mana cost. Six mana, whereas one is white and two black. Has to be tapped, tapped though, so it's like summoning it. sickness. Uh, in order to return this card from the graveyard to the battlefield. So, potentially you could get it back if you really want to. But The following round, yeah. yeah. Unless you have haste for every creature. Then we have Obseba Obsedat, the Ghost Council. It's a legendary creature, Spirit Advisor, for five mana, it's a 5-5. Five five. When it ends the battlefield, target opponent loses 2 life and you gain 2 life. And then at the beginning of your end step, you may exile this card. If you do, return it to the battlefield and its owner's control at the beginning of your next upkeep. Gains haste. So that's a pretty sweet ability. Yeah. Just do it every turn. 2 damage and 2 life to you. As long as you have a pretty decent health uh, advantage or uh, if you have a... Yeah, you don't have, even have to have that big of a creature advantage, you would probably use that almost every turn. Yeah. Uh, let's see if the camera's back again, since we're taking a new pack. Uh, now we'll go for the monocolored cards. We'll begin with artifacts and then go through the colors. So okay, yeah, this is one of our favorites. Uh, let's is it see. good where it is? Yeah, kind of, but uh, yeah, good. That angle is a lot better, otherwise... Okay, so glaring, glaring spotlight, definitely one of our favorites. For one mana, Creatures your opponent controls with Hexproof can be the targets of spell and spells and abilities you control, as though they didn't have Hexproof. So just Hexproof by that. One mana, and it's one mana. it just stays there. And then, as a good finisher, for three mana and sacrifice this card, creatures you control gain Hexproof until end of turn and are unblockable this turn. <laughs> so that's nearly sick for one of those cards. Especially if you have Aurelia. Yeah. Then we have Illusionist Bracers. For two mana, whenever an ability of equipped creature is activated, if it isn't a mana ability, copy that ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. So, so copy tap abilities on the equipped creature. So yeah, it can be pretty nice. But tap only abilities, you can't pay any mana for them. Yeah. Uh, no, no it, by mana abilities they mean abilities that will give you mana. So What? Uh, yeah. Are so, you sure about that? I'm pretty sure. Because those type of abilities cannot be countered or affected with at all, so... Uh, well, that's what I think anyway, so let's keep on moving. Let's not have a discussion about that. I let's not prove him wrong, is what he say. <laughs> <laughs> Verdant Haven for three mana, one green. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you gain two life. And whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, its control adds one mana of any color to his or her mana pool. Yeah, and it's a pretty card as well. So. Yeah. Foil. Then we have Slaughterhorn. You can. Uh, it costs 3 mana for a 3 2, but its Blood Rush is for 1 mana, and then you can get plus 3 plus 2 on a creature. So it's track. basically a slightly less oomphy uh, giant growth inbuilt to a 3 2. Hmm. So you get to choose whichever it's most useful in this situation. Then Burst of Strength. Put a plus one counter on target creature and untap it. I like that part since exactly. you get to actually untap the creature. But you only got one of that, right? Uh, one foot, but it's a common, so... Uh, but uh, you, you got others in... Yeah. Okay. Then we have Skarg Goliath. For eight mana, you get a nine nine trample. However, the good part is you can blood rush this for seven mana to give another creature plus nine and plus nine and trample. So, infect ho. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, that could be pretty awesome. Then we have this Gary Sage. Got five of those. Hmm, thought we got more of those. Which is a foil. And uh, this is a actually a pretty good card. A really good card, since it's got Evolve, which means that it's going to get counters in the future. 
and you can tap it to add one green to your mana pool for each plus one counter on Gyre Sage. So you're gonna get tons of mana from it. Yep. And it's a pretty strong creature, or it will be in the future. Then we have Ooze Flux, which